The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazek Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Sharp Edge. Today I am down in Dresden, Ontario, catching up with Henry Prinzen, Mazix agronomist. Sir, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Bernard. Yourself? I'm doing well. We are at the farm today of Mark Richards, and Mark has got a pretty diverse operation here, but I have a question for you. Why is Mark Richards on the Sharp Edge? So, Mark's on the Sharp Edge because he's kind of leading the cutting edge of robotics and autonomous agriculture, and we really wanted to catch up with him and see hey, what are some of the systems approaches with these robots and what does the future look like and maybe how does it fit into your operation and can it make you a better agronomist? Can it make you a better farmer with robots? I don't know, it's just a really interesting thought process and seeing where it's gonna go in the next few years. Here's Mark Richards. Hey Mark, we're out in your field, so can you give us a bit of a rundown on your operation and your rotation and what you're doing out here? So we farm some acres around and near Dresden, Ontario. Our typical rotation in a field like this is one year of wheat followed by a year of sugar beets, then corn, and then soybeans, and then back to wheat. We're 100% strip till and no-till where we can be, and we're looking at a system where we're not working any more than any more ground than we have to. We've seen the robot. Tell us a little bit about the robot and what it's doing for you and where you've come with the robot. So this is the second year we've tried an autonomous vehicle to use it to plant sugar beets and this year we planted some corn with it. Last year we used a product called a farm droid. There was issues with it related to my system with strip till which is why we went to this year we have an agro and telly roboti. It's a 70 horsepower Kubota diesel motor that drives it. The one before was 100% solar powered, which was kind of cool. The Roboti is a small light unit, plants a, it's capable of doing a 10 foot planter pass. Right now we're set up for 10 foot spraying pass. It works about three miles an hour when it's in autonomous mode. And we wanted to make sure that it could follow the strips that we'd made with our strip tiller and plant on the strips and see if it'll work into the system. So. What are we hoping to learn with this robot? Like, what are some of your goals with the robots going forward? Well, the goal of the robot is to determine whether it is actually more efficient to use autonomous vehicles in agriculture in southwestern Ontario. One of the biggest things is to have the scalability of the product to be able to actually cover some ground. So if you compare a four-row planter at three miles an hour to somebody planting with a 24-row planter at seven miles an hour, obviously I'm gonna fall behind, but what are the advantages to having that smaller implement in the field? Can I get in there a couple days earlier because it's lighter and it's gonna be driving on my non-work ground and will it let me get ideal planting conditions and catch the moisture before it leaves? will allow me to take a closer look at how things are working in the field whereas you know everybody gets in the habit when you're sitting in the tractor seat and you, all your monitors say everything's good why do i need to get out and check it's a nice air conditioned or heated cab depending on the year i can sit there and read my twitter friends i can sit there and answer emails i can do other farm management stuff but maybe this has more focus of what agronomically are we doing right and wrong on the planner it frees you up to do better management that way, but it is, as you think about the whole system, it's changing what you actually do every day. So Mark, what do you think some of the pros or cons, can, like maintenance cost-wise with the Robotti are? Still, I won't, I won't say struggling, but I'm still running over in my head whether this is the way we need to go or whether you know, large scale implements with better boots on the ground is where I see it a fit is for a guy in that five, 700 acre range. You can plant 50 acres a day with this. So you got 10 to 12 days of planting window almost every year between the first of April and the end of May. Some years you got more, some years you got less, but again, you got the advantages of light machine. Does it let you do, does it, is it better for the soil health because you're not doing the compaction? Is it better because you can be there on time ahead of time or you can get in there earlier for post, post planting or post emergence spraying or side dressing or fertilizer applications? What kind of equipment do you need to build to fit? The, the robot has a category two, three point hitch on it. It's capable of living 1.7 metric tons. So that's your design limit on what you're gonna put on it. 
what all can you do with it? How many things can you do in one pass to make that four row implement actually be the same efficiencies as doing an eight row system where you're making multiple passes to accomplish the same goals? So looking at fertilizing, planting, and some pesticide application in one pass, that takes three passes away from going through the field three times. You're only going through once with this nice light thing. And yes, I'm gonna to have to have somebody managing and nursing the robot, but you still need somebody to nurse a regular planter, a regular fertilizer spreader, and a regular sprayer. So still working it out. And so moving forward, we wanna look at what can we build for it. We're looking at a better planter unit. This year we used a John Deere Flexi Planter unit which is very old technology but does work especially at lower speeds there are some challenges with that um, this year was not a good year this was we ran out of moisture due to the dry conditions of spring things are looking pretty good now and things are going to catch up and in the future how many of these would you have to have to do the five to seven hundred acres and somebody's got to do the research and the real in the field trials with it or else we're not going to have answers and maybe it doesn't fit North American agriculture but maybe it does. So Mark what's kind of the timeline or what are some of your ideas in the immediate future with the robot? So in the immediate future we're going to take I'll call them baby steps but we have designed and we're in the process of building a two row strip till machine because we have done some experiments with the tractor and we are pretty sure that it'll be capable of pulling strips at three miles an hour on two rows. We have to talk to Agro and Telly to make sure we can get it set to do a five foot thing and we will make more tramping or more wheel tracks but we don't think that's a problem in the summer we're looking at doing it after we for next year we are going to get a tricked out four row planter built to go on the back of it. We're gonna combine those operations I talked about. We're gonna put dry fertilizer application on the robot as well as the planting. And if we can, we'll incorporate that first pass of spraying behind it. So the short term plans, we're looking at investing in those implements and potentially in a couple of weeks, we should have a 10 foot sprayer that we can put in part of one of the sugar beet fields for fungicide application. The advantage there is we're hoping to be able to band spray until the beets are a pretty good size and save on chemical costs. And we'll see what that would have a positive environmental benefit. So that's the immediate plans. So looking forward down the road, five years from now, what does this farmer autonomous farming look like for you, Mark? So to put the whole autonomous and with, if everything works the way we want it to, in five years, you would have more than one of the robots. So picture having three robotics working and they can all work and one person can keep up to keeping up checking behind them, making sure they're doing, and probably keeping the product in them for the nursing them. But you would be able to come into this 150 acre field we're standing in right now, which has got some sugar beets and some corn in it, and spend a day here with those three machines and be done here and move on to another set of fields if you had them close together. Or you could split them up and run. The idea is to make sure this technology is scalable so it's actually relevant in North Americans agricultural production system and we have plans and we're looking at funding opportunities to try and do this where we're not taking 100 percent of the risk where we're kind of sharing it and i'm still trying to wrap my head around is this worth it but we will see so there you have it henry um a great conversation with mark uh one thing i learned is hey robots aren't necessarily going to replace people no, I think what we have to learn or think about with robots is that we might have to do some more management. We're not riding in the tractor anymore, but we're riding or we're following along behind the robot. We're checking the field. Maybe we can be a little more boots on the ground, a little more active in the field, finesse that crop and put it into the perfect conditions. Yeah, and Mark's talking about, you know, multiple robots. He's not going to have that big horsepower, but he's probably going to be able to do a lot. Yeah, so we got to look at some of the potential benefits of scaling back is maybe we have less compaction. Maybe two robots allows us to do, you know, do different fields at a different time. Or in some cases, these robots are going to be doing two jobs at once so that we can scale back size. But if we get two jobs done instead of one, we're catching up. Great interview, Henry. Great to have Mark Richards on the show today. I will see you later in the summer and we'll see you next time on The Sharp Edge. Oh, oh, oh.